Thank you so much. Ah, uh, thank you so much, Manu, and thank you so much to all of you who ditched Gavin Woods to see me. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I'm going to talk about ephemery, which is a new kind of testnet that we have on Ethereum, and uh, it's uh, yeah, it's kind of a kind of a still um, in diapers thing. So my goal here is to just explain first what do we do, why we do it, how to do it in more practical way. So just quickly some uh, some theory behind it. Uh, I mean, you sitting here, I don't really need to explain what testnet is. Uh, just to sum it up, it's a network where we test things. Uh, we try to have a, uh, we, can, we, we, we can run Ethereum clients uh, in a, setup which is close to mainnet uh, where we don't uh, use uh, the production uh, production uh, environment uh, just uh, unlimited amount of coins that we can use to test applications running on these test nets we can use them to test clients themselves uh, we can uh, uh, we can use this to tweak the parameters and find out what works and what not. So uh, the goal is to have a network, Ethereum network, identical to mainnet, but well, with nothing to lose. Um, so what uh, testnets are there these days? Uh, this is already old slide as Gurley is deprecating, but basically we have two major testnets right now, Gurley and Sepolia. Gurley to be uh, replaced by Holeshki or Holeshovica, which is... Um, uh, basically the same idea of having open validator set, so anybody can stake on this testnet. The difference with Holeshki is that it will have much larger validator set from the genesis. Uh, 1.5 million validators, which is three times size of mainnet, so it's huge. Um, uh, Gerli is also kind of old, so so the state is already big. If you want to uh, sync the full chain, it's going to be hundreds of gigabytes probably. Um, and uh, with Sepolia, which is quite younger, uh, it's faster to bootstrap. However, uh, the validator set is closed. So, no, so people cannot permissionlessly test their validators. They need to get a special permission from the testnet operators to be able to operate their validator here. And yeah, and Voholeshki will be open, but large. So to this landscape of test nets, we are bringing um, ephemery because of a uh, few reasons that happen uh, when you run test net for so long. First of all, uh, the main problem, I guess, for many people is the supply of these testnet coins. Uh, you might notice that people even friggin' selling them. Uh, uh, we have faucets which are drained, and people don't have get where to get this testnet eat to test their applications. Uh, so um, the supply being somehow limited and guarded is a problem. The validator set that I mentioned here is that uh, people don't care about validators on test nets. They are just going to spin it up, turn it off, and uh, we have maybe Gurley not finally analyzing because of it or missing a bunch of blocks, so it's kind of unstable. Uh, and if we have a, a huge validator set like in Holeshki, it's going to take a long time to propose a block. So if you want to uh, test your uh, block proposing, uh, it's actually going to, going to take a lot of time. Um, uh, also, if we have... Um, and the size that I mentioned, so if we have testnet running for years, uh, many people using it, testing on it, uh, it's going to be hundreds of gigabytes, takes um, hours to sync. If I just want to do some tests, it's not worth running a huge note for it. And in the end, all of these testnets and will end up deprecated anyway. So they are kind of ephemeral, or we need to realize that these testnets are ephemeral anyway. So uh, yeah, now, <laughs> We have the ephemery, and uh, we take this idea of testnet being ephemeral a bit further, and uh, we enshrine it, so we go back to Genesis every other week, uh, or every week right now. So yeah, ephemery is testnet which resets automatically, periodically, with predetermined parameters. So um, I don't have like one testnet running for years, but the network is running right now, it's set to a week, uh, it's running for a one week, and then it goes back to Genesis with some set of Genesis validators. So the validators are there. They're going to bootstrap the network. I lost the slides. Let's see. Um, and um, it's still the single testnet, uh, testing infrastructure. So like the same block explorers and everything pointing to the same. What's up with that? Ah, uh, pointing to the same network. It's just uh, bumped. It's just uh, the new iteration. 
Um, thanks to this, uh, basically scraping everything that the testnet holds after some period, we can have very generous faucets, for example. So uh, you don't have to be worried about supply issues. You can drain all the faucets because we will get it back in a week. Uh, and uh, also, we can have more uh, stable validator set because because we can ensure the supermajority in a way that we have enough validators there, uh, so nobody can take over the majority in the given period. So, um, so uh, with, with, the, with the time to activate the validator, we, have, uh, we can uh, have enough time to, uh, um, or not enough time for people to somehow maliciously take over, and then it's reset it again. So, ephemery is automatically resetting, uh, and it's good for you because you can already use it for any kind of short-term testing. If you are running some Ethereum infrastructure that you don't need in a week or in a few days or maybe in a month, you can deploy it there. So short-term testing uh, of applications, for example, uh, like looking at Gerli or Sepolia, can you imagine how many Hello Worlds are there? Just like, you know, Hello World kind of programs where I'm just playing around and just bloating the state of the testnet for not a good reason. Uh, it doesn't have to happen there. Uh, Holish key is set to be running, it's supposed to run for like four or five years now. Uh, so in those five years, it will be huge. But if we can take some load of it and put it on ephemery where it's just going to be, uh, just going to be ephemeral, uh, we are saving space for the long running testnets. Uh, open small validator set so it's easy to spin up a validator and run it. Uh, now, there are two things to it because uh, of course your validator will be gone in a week, but many people just want to try their validator. They just want to uh, try how to do the deposit, how to activate it, and, and then do it on mainnet. So uh, for a single testing of validator, it's ideal. Uh, you can also run the validator long term, but that requires that you follow the resets. Uh, very fast to bootstrap because there is like no history. It syncs immediately. You can have archive node, which is like 10 megabytes or something. I'm, I'm making it up, but like very small, small, uh, small node. And you can break anything. Yeah, you can drain faucets. You can just put all the data there. You can really, really play with it. So you have a uh, very open playground, uh, which can be more, um, even more unbound than uh, the long-term running test nets. So to use it, uh, yeah, we are doing the weekly resets right now. That's going to become, it's, it's because, because of uh, ephemery still being kind of developed and uh, it's better for testing uh, some implementations when we can see the reset every week uh, without running separate network resetting. Uh, but uh, so currently it resets on Thursday evening, Thursday 8 p.m. local time. So right now it's less than, less than a day old. We have a very small ephemery right now arrested last night. Uh, you can find all the information in ephemery.dev. Check it out before they take you down. Um, <laughs> it's an internal joke. Uh, so yeah, uh, and on ephemery.dev, you find all these re repos and all the information. So uh, in the project repository, you can find some more details and the specs. In the Genesis repository, that's where uh, the function for generating the Genesis is, and you can download uh, the latest uh, Genesis, the latest, I will show you that later, uh, the latest iteration of ephemery. Um, the scripts are for uh, running the retention, for uh, running it as a service, and then all the explorers and faucets and nice stuff. So you can find that on ephemery dev, use it today, and even soon, fuck me, with, uh, with Remix. So if you know Remix, it's... Uh, uh, Remix is this beautiful, uh, beautiful... Uh, uh, web uh, IDE, which is uh, which is great for uh, it's probably just my slot. It's all right. I cannot move much. Uh, so a Remix is, is a web IDE, which is uh, great for learning solidity. Uh, if you are starting to learn the language, if you just want to play around and deploy a bunch of stuff to the testnet, Remix is great for that. And Remix integrated ephemery support as of next week, actually. It's currently in testing, and next week it should be uh, on the production-ready application. Oh, come on, guys. It's just moving too much. I think it's this USB-C thingy. Anyway, uh, so that, that's how you use it. And what I want to show you in this workshop is actually a workshop you can follow and run a family node yourself. And I want to show you how to do it because as of right now, we don't have, we don't have uh, 
So ephemery is not uh, included into in the official client releases, which means you cannot, j right now, you cannot just do dash dash ephemery on get and run, run it. Uh, you need to do a custom network setup, which is like what clients uh, enable, just, just, uh, uh, just, uh, uh, you know, defining a custom network based on genesis and parameters. So we are going to do that as soon as the thing comes on. I think it's happening. Awesome. I just need to mirror it. There we go. Awesome. So let's do it. Uh, let's run the... I'm going to show you on Debian 12 in this little virtual machine. Let me know if you can see it well. And uh, it's like completely ad hoc from beginning. I didn't prepare anything. So I'm just going to show you how you do it if you're a normal user, I guess. So yeah, let's do it. Let's open Firefox. And uh, the website that you want to go to is ephemery.dev, as I explained. So when you check the ephemery resources, there is actually uh, information you can see uh, all the overview, you see when it's resetting. So it was resetted last night, and the next is in the next week on Thursday. So we have very fresh network. Oh, here on the ephemery dev, you can just add it to the MetaMask with single click. The thing is uh, that as we reset the network, we need to bump uh, the uh, chain ID uh, to uh, because of the replay attacks. So you need to add it to MetaMask uh, basically after every reset again, or just like update the MetaMask settings, um, or your, uh, yeah, so to run a note, uh, we need to download uh, the latest release, and uh, well, we also need to download the clients, right? So let's go to Go Ethereum downloads, and let's do Lighthouse, how about that? How about that? Yeah, so. Downloading get, it will be a second, and let's download Lighthouse. So completely fresh. And the last thing to download will be that's, uh, I didn't see it. This is portable, yeah. Okay, and we don't, so here is the 93rd um, iteration of ephemery. And uh, here is basically what you need to run, uh, run it. And we are going to download this uh, tar, tar ball, which is, uh, which is everything we need. So let's, let's extract it. Lighthouse, get, and uh, actually let's make, uh, uh, me extract it to this so F. Okay, we get all the all the ephemeral data here. So I, I I hope you can see it well. Let me just maybe make it slightly bigger for you. Come on, what is it? And if you oh come on, is it is it back? Okay. Okay, zoom in a little for you folks. And um, so we have here all the data from the ephemery, all the, all the uh, different files. So don't be confused. The main, I will just explain you the few main ones. So you see the Genesis JSON, that's the important one. The Genesis JSON is the Genesis. Uh, the, it's uh, the Genesis block, basically, uh, including all the validator set, all the faucets, all the values, uh, including uh, what is the current chain ID. Um, and this Genesis is being generated with each iteration, so we need to download it. So that's important piece. Uh, then um, the Genesis SSZ, that's the encoded in the SSZ, which is used by the consensus client. So the consensus the CL actually needs uh, to have this, uh, this file, um, right? And uh, then uh, some important things that you might need to know are uh, the boot notes. So of course we have custom boot notes that uh, are serving the ephemeral data. So you can find their, uh, their uh, request recordings here for, uh, yeah, but all of them in the node vars. So this is, this is done in a variable format. So you can just uh, source uh, this, uh, this file and 
you load all the variables, right? So uh, here, here now I have um, in my environment I have all the all the ephemeral uh, variables. And uh, let's go back to clients, which we have here. We have Lighthouse here, and we have uh, we have get. Yeah, uh, let me do this maybe. And now, with first, let's start with get. So go with Ethereum. If I want to run the uh, execution client on a custom network, what I need to do is first initialize the genesis. I need to write down uh, the network genesis, uh, which is in the genesis JSON. So I'm going to do uh, get. Uh, let's let's put data. Is it data dear? Oh my god! I hope it is. Uh, let's put uh, data get and in it. And that's downloads, no, it's testnet. It's testnet genesis.json. And you see, I successfully wrote the genesis state. So now I made this get date, oh, sorry, uh, data, data get, uh, where I wrote down the ephemery testnet genesis of the current one. And so the thing is, uh, if, uh, uh, it's, it's better to use the custom data path because you might just run it without it and in the, the, the default you will already have some main there or something so uh, I'm using the custom path here. Uh, now we are ready to run the, con uh, the both execution consensus clients, we just need to point them to the right, uh, to the right uh, way. Uh, one, if you, I mean, if you want to know the command, if you want help with this, which I might need, uh, it's good to check. So here in the ephemeral testnet GitHub, you can find uh, various repositories. And in the ephemeral scripts, we can find systemd services. I wanted to show you how to run this systemd service, but I'm not sure if we have enough time. So let me just show you here is example of how to run get. So we can use this comment for it. Uh, so let's, what we need is, uh, yeah, basically just to define the data there and uh, the boot notes. Let me copy this, maybe. Okay. Or I will do sync mode. We can, you can do archive notes or full sync very easily because there is no data, right? So let's do, let's do get, yeah, why not get with the data there that I specified to data get and now uh, this boot note chain ID yeah am I are you watching me PK or somebody is it is it good yeah looks good so we see that get is running on the chain ID with this number so it's connecting to some network and hopefully to the right ones it's trying to find peers let's see if it does and meanwhile let's open a new terminal and let's do the same with lighthouse for the lighthouse, we also have a little helper here. We need to specify BN, data deer, stake in matrix. Yeah, let me copy this again. So you, you point them to the right boot node. The boot node list is in my environment variable, right? Or, and come on. Come on. What am I doing? So that's this. Oh, oh, and I, I need to. I didn't. I didn't enable the the, the JWT. Uh, I didn't specify the the JWT token. Sorry about that. So that's. Uh, oh, come on. Little help here. Ah. Uh, don't remember the get flags. It's out RPC the JWT secret. Okay, so out. RPC dot JWT secret secret equals let's do it here. Okay. And now let's do the lighthouse then. Let's again source for the variables. No, it's downloads, I'm sorry. Downloads source this that node vars. And now I go to take the example of beacon chain. So it's, yeah, dash lighthouse, beacon node, 
let's do, so the beautiful thing is I can do testnet in Lighthouse. I don't need to point to specific files. I just tell him testnet dir is this, and he's going to load all the necessary files in testnet. That's why I'm also using Lighthouse for a demonstration, because for in some other clients, I need to point each specific file. So it's this easier. Mm. Okay, and uh, the data dir can be, can be default, I can do data dir to uh, uh, data here, uh, this notes, and the JWT secret flag says what? Execution, okay, here. This bad boy. Just going to fix this to the right path, and it was the local for JWT, and uh, yeah, fuck me. What did I do there? Execution, ah, oh, here. Okay, and I'm gonna just delete this. And there we go. Execution engine online, nice. We have both running, fork, fork choice. Look at it, we are syncing ephemery. Did it, whoa. Okay, so this is how you run. I know it looks very easy when I do it like that. It looks incredibly simple, but you have the comments right here. What I wanted to show is that you need to initialize the custom custom uh, custom network. And yeah, there we go. We are syncing. We are syncing a family. Uh, we see it goes pretty fast, and soon we will catch the head. So now we have get with Lighthouse running on the ephemera testnet. You can use this node to run your validator, to connect it to your wallet, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, of course, there are public RPCs for ephemera. You don't need to use this one just to use it in your wallet. Uh, but for running node, this is what you got to do. And you see we are already verifying some new blocks. We are synced that fast. This was a full sync. This was like, <laughs> of course, it's the less than day old, but still. Okay, um, yeah, looking for peers, but it will get there, I'm sure. Uh, cool. So we have still a bunch of time left. So uh, then I can show you, I can show you actually running it, uh, running the uh, retention. So uh, what we did now is that we connected to the current iteration of a family, right? We are just the user. Uh, you can do this every week if you want, or if you want to run your node long term, for example, if you are running a validator long term, or you want to run some service, some block explorer or something, you need to be able to reset it um, uh, every week uh, automatically, right? You don't want it to do this like HPM uh, every Thursday. So to do, uh, to do it automatically, uh, there are various options. There is even a Docker setup here. You can, you can uh, use this, but I'm not sure, I don't think I have Docker in this VM, so I'm just going to do it with the script. So uh, this is the script which uh, you can use to do the retention on your own machine. So again, the thing here is that this is something which is specified by the ephemery specs, and it's not yet implemented in clients. So we have this external script which implements it for us, and you can of course like tweak it, that's a beautiful part of it. Um, but so yeah, it's not that uh, it's not that easy. It's not in the client yet, and we need to modify it. You see that there are some uh, assumptions here about where the data is, and it's running it as uh, uh, systemd services. So what are we going to do is that we need to create a systemd services. Let's do just the uh, the get and the lighthouse without validator for now, and uh, then we can run this script, which will do the automatic uh, this, uh, the automatic uh, reset, and it's going to run it as um, it's going to run it as uh, um, uh, a cron, or you can run it uh, just on the background with a loop. Yeah, so I can do that. But guys, we have we have a bunch of ephemeral contributors here who I promise that they can also chime in. So if there is something interactive, some questions or anything to add, yeah. Do, do you want to come? Yeah. Could you maybe elaborate a little bit on the deterministic part of it, because uh, I think a little bit of, I've not fully grasped like why is it so cool uh, to, to, to relaunch it every week. So maybe you can sort of 
take us a little bit down the road, like what has to happen for clients to implement it and why the rules, like what is deterministic about it and why, uh, why clients can implement it without like the retention hassle. Yeah, thank you so much. It's a great question. Uh, so I will just show you quickly the, the, so you can find specs here and you can also find uh, the draft EIP here. So uh, this is the, the, the part which explains it well, uh, the different, uh, different parts of it. So basically, um, ephemery, uh, the idea is that we reset every week to save the data to, uh, to enable this ephemeral test and setup. Uh, however, the current clients, uh, uh, the network, whether it's mainnet or Sepolia or Girly or any other network you want to set up in your client, maybe it's Beacon, uh, what is it? Uh, some polygon or something, right? You need to define the network parameters within the client. It's hard coded in the client. Uh, and it's very simple because this genesis, what I would just show you that we initialized in get here, this, this genesis JSON or SSZ or what, that's with, within the client code. It's in the binary when you download the client. Actually, Lighthouse has, has had a great thing about it because the Holish key uh, genesis is so huge with all the validators that they had to do a different uh, kind of confirmation there. Uh, so that, that's how it, the client works. It has uh, the, the network predefined. Um, and it's very simple, right? But with ephemery, we need a new genesis every period. So we uh, wrote the specs, this little EIP thing, where we explain exactly how the genesis should be crafted and uh, therefore the clients can do it uh, by themselves. It has two parts. First is crafting the, the genesis and the second is the REST mechanism. So first to craft the genesis, uh, we define a genesis zero. So we, we will have a genesis in the client which is hard coded there as a normal network. However, when the client starts, it's not going to use this genesis, which is hard coded, but it's going to take it as a pre-image to um, a craft to build uh, the current genesis. And how does it do it is that it looks at the genesis zero, the genesis zero has some timestamp and uh, it defines a period. So we know that this timestamp from the genesis zero was, I don't know, six months ago. Uh, the period is one month. So the current iteration will be the number six or seven. It depends on how, whether we start from zero. Uh, so uh, yeah, um, so we are in the sixth iteration. And now with this, I calculate the number of iteration uh, and I know the, so I can calculate the current, the, the timestamp of the current genesis and iteratively I can calculate the current chain ID. So I can, just based on this, this pre-image, which is not the previous one, but it can, it's the, the, the number zero, the genesis, genesis, basically, I would call it, uh, you, you use this one to craft the current parameters. So when the, you start a client and you give him uh, use ephemery, it's going to check what is hardcoded there and craft the current genesis. So that's the first part, crafting the genesis. The other part is the reset mechanism. The reset mechanism is a problem for itself because it requires client to basically shut down and purge data at a given height or given timestamp. Uh, so this is, uh, this is uh, something that clients are not supposed to do, just like, you know, uh, randomly purge all the database. Uh, so there is no mechanism for that in the clients right now. Uh, the state of the implementation, you can follow uh, maybe in, um, um, uh, well, yeah, I, I forgot to say something important, actually. You can uh, join our matrix here. So if you have any question or need any support, in this matrix channel, we can uh, chat with you, we can help you, you can, you know, come to contribute. And there is a contributors channel where there are uh, currently two, three people working on integrations in clients. Um, and the first level, the basic level of supporting clients is just the genesis. So uh, uh, you can easily connect to the network, but you need this reset function to keep up of the resets. But again, this is something which is needed for people who want to run the Genesis validator, run some sort of service on top of it, and so on. Um, so yeah, uh, this is like the next level of support. You can uh, read all of these specs. Uh, for, uh, you can find it as I, in the resources. As I, these are the original specs, and it's rewritten to the EIP format with some more details. Uh, one thing that I wanted to mention is also that we have 
contracts there uh, because again we also want to attract uh, dev developers so if you want to test your smart contracts and it depends on I don't know Uniswap or safe or some of these basic primitives they are there because we have automatic deployer which um, uh, deploys uh, this set of contracts after each reset. Uh, so uh, you can count on some basic infrastructure being there always. Uh, and uh, yeah, so uh, that's, that's that's it. I hope I answered the question, yeah. Um, I, would, I can demonstrate the, the reset script uh, or uh, something similar, where is it? Yeah, so this is the, the retention script. Uh, what you need to do is to change this to match your environment, right? Just like the the, the right the directory, and the don't change the, the, the this is the Genesis repository is the is the repo uh, from which is pulling the um, uh, the release. So that's what I was showing you somewhere. That's this one, right? The Genesis repository. So don't change that. And then it's just using system control or the system D to uh, uh, shut down the client, uh, uh, shut out the client when it's, uh, when it comes to reset, it, it checks the, the, with the local, local um, uh, RPC to the, or so, so the rest of the beacon node. It's going to check um, uh, whether it's uh, on the current genesis and uh, what is, whether it's over the interval, over the period. And then uh, it stops the client, Purges the database, loads the new gen downloads the new Genesis release, loads the Genesis, and uh, set up the Genesis and starts the clients. That's basically this uh, abstracted in the functions. Um, yeah. So as simple as that. I can I can show you. Um, we have we have like ten more minutes. But guys, if you have some more questions, maybe something that the audience actually want to see, want to hear, uh, anything to add. No question. I have one question. Go ahead. Last time, you, last time that we talked, you, we, I was asking you if uh, you're going to have the final state of the chain um, before you reset it, um, and if that's going to be somewhere so I can come back and see how my smart contracts behave um, in that specific time. Maybe there's some parameters that have changed. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to understand if the state is going to be saved anywhere. Yeah, so right now we are not saving the latest state. A great question, thank you so much for the question. Uh, so yeah, we are not saving the latest state or the latest data anywhere. Uh, we are just uh, purging it. However, uh, before that it checks uh, for the validators. and So there is a refund mechanism uh, which can, uh, if you've been running a validator, you get full or partial refund uh, based on the latest uh, state of the network. PK, do you want to add something? Is there something like that uh, you want to add? Okay, okay. So because that's the guy running the running the, the refunds, right? Right there. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, if you want your refund, like you can, uh, uh, so, so yeah, uh, to answer your question, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's not, it's not using the state itself, just uh, the data from explorers. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. So the thing here is that like it's kind of a like it's a lot of overhead to do snapshot of the, the current state and store it, store all of them somewhere. Uh, I think it makes sense in the future uh, with uh, when we have the reset. Uh, the, 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 again, the reset right now is weekly, and we are aiming for like monthly or more, like months probably should be should be good. Uh, actually, you can see some calculations to that here. Uh, so this is this is an estimation of how many validators will give us how much uh, time. So we would be aiming for something like one two months here, around 100k validators, and um, we would have, be safe uh, from anything uh, uh, up to like yeah two months. Months, let's say so uh, in that case we have you know less uh, uh, less uh, snapshots and uh, it would make sense I guess to to save them uh, but again then, then you need some sort of tool to interact with it uh, some way how to load it to your client and so on uh, so uh, it would be good to know what's there uh, for the refunds and this kind of things but right now it's based on just the explorers yeah we are running author scan and block scout explorer and uh, also uh, 
uh, lightweight Beacon Explorer that uh, PK made and the, the, the one from Bitfly as well. So uh, the infrastructure is mostly there. If there is something missing, if you have the case for it, uh, come to the Matrix group and make your case. And I mean, we can help you to implement it or we can always come and open a PR, right? Uh, so so uh, that's what I, by the way, Ephemery uh, is community run. It's uh, there are one, two, now two people from EF working on it, but most of it are people from community, just people who came and were excited about the idea. So I would say similar to Gerli a few years ago, like com generally community run testnet, that's our goal, uh, not to be dependent on some party, but to work with client teams, to work with uh, the wider community that wants to do their own thing. So we have people running their, uh, different people running their own validators. We currently have, I can show you the Explorer actually, um, so we currently have uh, what like four or five people running the validator, the Genesis validators. So if one, two of them goes down, we are still finalizing. You see, we are beautifully finalizing right now. Uh, uh, we are at uh, we are at epoch one one hundred seventy three, <laughs> so yeah, pretty young. And you, yeah, you can even see that these are our notes. Uh, PK sitting right there, me and Remy uh, validating. Yeah, so yeah. The faucets are in the same same link right here. There are two of them here, and there is one which works only on API. So this one gives you 30, 30 to eat every five minutes or something. Uh, if you want more, you can really get like shit ton. Just gotta ask, and it's very easy to ask because you just come to Matrix Group. So in case you need more than the thirty two, which is like you know enough for a tested stuff, but in case you want to spin up like bunch of validators, that's one case that I want to see in ephemery, it's like big staking operation, testing heavily uh, big amount of validators. So spinning up, uh, you know, thousands, thousands of them. And uh, if you need that, you can just ask us. Uh, there is also the, the proof of work faucet from PK, uh, who can, um, which where you need to use your CPU to mine a little and you get a bunch of ETH from it. And actually you can get even more ETH from another faucet which is not listed here but you can find it in resources. If you go to resources and you check the, 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 the explorer here, uh, where is the faucets? There is this API faucet. Uh, this, this one you need to use with API. You can just use curl, CRL, and I hope it, yeah, it runs. This is, this is my beautiful website, my friends. I follow the this is motherfucking website kind of uh, 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 design, yeah. So you can just you can just do this kind of curl where you ask what address and how much. And uh, in the status, if we check the if we check the status, it will tell us what is the what is the payout. Uh, so yeah, max. This is. 100, so you have to wait uh, five minutes for 100, uh, 100 eat. So this one is more generous. Uh, and there is this much available, so yeah, you can get part of it. So yeah, that's another one. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, something else uh, you're interested in, you would like to see or hear. We have, we are syncing. Oh, we don't have peers on Lighthouse. That's not good. Let's. Oh no, let's get. Maybe it's because of the inode list. Let's see. Uh, Any other question? Yeah, any other question, please? Oh, sorry. Yeah? Sorry. Oh, you were. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, quick question. Do you, do you think uh, or intend ephemery to be, or short-lived testnets in general, to be canary testnets like Gurley, Huleski for spec changes as well? Or do you think it's more likely that it follows mainnet specs and that's it? Or you want to experiment with it as well? Like what is sort of the general direction here? Thank you. So there are a few things to it. Uh, first, like right now, it's still, as I say, kind of development phase. Because like the main obstacle there, it's not hard coded in the clients. And uh, before that, like we, we, there are some actually. So there is work in progress. Implement. There is like basically done implementation, uh, but like not open PR uh, in a get. And there is work in progress implementation in the red. 
uh, uh, Lodestar and Lighthouse. Uh, so that, that, would, that will be a big step towards like being uh, canonical uh, or something. Uh, but like right now, small community run and anybody can use it. Uh, we are like recognized. Uh, there is uh, a blog post upcoming about Holoshki starting uh, here in a few minutes. And um, uh, basically this, um, uh, in this blog post, I want FMRI mentioned as an option, not like one of those which you should use, but there is also this option. So we are at this level right now, getting there with the client implementations, but also uh, uh, the, the, the thing is that, yeah, uh, we are going to be changing the parameters before we get there. So longer, uh, longer period, uh, more Genesis validators. So yeah, if you want to contribute either by implementation, if you're a dev, if you just want to run the Genesis validator, if you have like spare machine with like one gig of RAM, that's all you need really to run this. Uh, so uh, if, you, if you want to spin up a, a validator long term, uh, you can just come to the matrix, ask about it, or in the, in the Genesis repo, so the, the repository, which is generating the Genesis, uh, there is the list of uh, the Genesis validators in, uh, where is it? Uh, in here somewhere, validators. Um, so you can add yourself, you can add yourself here, basically. Uh, your, you generate the keys and you add them here, uh, right. And something else I wanted to mention, uh, canonical and uh, anyway, there is Holish key starting right now. Uh, in a few minutes, uh, I will I will make space for that because I think I should be finishing. Thank you so much for the attention. Uh, huge cheers to to the Holoshevitz attestant, by the way. I'm very excited to see that. I'm coming. Part of my heart is from there, from Prague, from Holoshevice, Prague 7, which is which uh, this test that takes the name from. Uh, by the way, you can visit Hackerspace there uh, for Hackers Congress Parallel Police in two weeks. Uh, let me know if you're interested to see uh, my node running Holoshevice testnet in Holoshevice. <laughs> cool. Uh, yeah, that's that's uh, yeah. Uh, that's all about ephemery. And if you have anything, please reach out to me. There is also the PK. Hey, show hand. Uh, so yeah, if you have any questions or anything else, yeah, we are here. Thank you so much.